have a slight basket problem. Well, it, it's not a problem because baskets serve a purpose in my life which is to organize everything, so it's more of an addiction, but then that is bad, so I guess I do have a problem, but at least I'm self-aware about it, right? And that helps me justify my addiction and just keep on pretending that I'm actually gonna do something about it. I have a problem. Whenever I'm done with the sewing project, I have a lot of fabric scraps left over. Some are beautiful rectangles that are a result of cropping off the bottom of a shirt, but mostly they're the weirdest and most random shapes possible. But no matter what size, shape, color, or material they are, we can use them in today's project. And by today, I really mean the past couple of days because my sewing machine has been super moody and because my time management skills never cooperate. This project can take a while, so it's perfect for night owls or just people like me that have a caffeine sensitivity and can't sleep at a proper hour. Even after just a cup of black tea. Like, it doesn't even have to be coffee or espresso for me, it can just be black tea, even green tea will keep me up at night. When the only thing you can drink is flavored water. Step one, organizing the fabric. Recently, I sat down with all my fabric scraps and leftovers from the past year, along with all the clothes I don't want to slash can't donate or sell. The deciding factor between keeping something for a project or giving it away is if I can actually do something with it, or if someone else may want it more. I organized my fabric into four different piles. The first was fabric that was big enough on its own and I could do a whole project, like a large size project with it just on its own. I also knew exactly what I was gonna do with the fabric in that pile. The second pile was fabric that I knew I could do a project with, but I didn't know what yet. The third pile is fabric that I can make small projects with, like scrunchies or coasters. The fourth category was fabric that had no more potential and I would just turn it into a basket or another project that involves scraps. Now, breaking down that last category, which is fabric just for baskets, some pieces were super long or and I didn't like the color or the print, and some pieces were also really small and they seem like they have no potential, but I assure you they do in this project. If I have a long rectangle of fabric, then I cut that up into make long t-shirt yarn. Looking at these rectangles reminds me of the tulips in Holland, and then I'm thinking of that scene from Spider-Man Far From Home of Tom Holland leaving a plane from Holland. And now I'm thinking about how my YouTube recommended has all been Tom Holland compilations annoying Avengers for four minutes straight. Anyway, um, if I have a bunch of weirdly shaped fabric, then what I do is try to categorize them into colors or other shapes that complement one another. My goal is to turn this random set of shapes of fabric into a rectangle. I try to stuff the existing rectangles with fabric too sometimes if they're not big enough. I know the way I organize it might not look organized, but I swear it actually is. Step two, braiding the basket. So we're finally at the part where you can take tangible steps towards making the project. I start by braiding my fabric with three pieces. You can also do it with four. You can hold up your braid with a curtain hook, a binder ring, a carabiner, whatever you have works, even tape. So when you're about to run out of a piece of fabric, what you have to do is kind of similar to how a French braid works, add in more pieces. I cover one piece of yarn with another and sometimes I envelope it all together. And you kind of just do this process again and again and again. This is why this project is good for night owls and people that just like to stay up and do nothing. This time you can still do nothing, but also braid while you're at it. When you braid with the basket, start with the uglier pieces because that's gonna make the bottom of the basket that no one will see. This is so awesome because I can use the clothes that have really ugly prints that are pilled, that have no potential at all, and I can turn them into the bottom of the basket base. This is perfect for those fabrics that have zero potential, and this project just proves that every piece of fabric has potential, no matter what it looks like. And that is very inspirational to me. In a literal and metaphorical way. I use an old pillowcase, clothes that were super embarrassing to admit that I ever bought, or clothes that I just don't vibe with. Or as some would say, subatomic vibrations. Yeah, I need to stop watching The Flash. I also made sure to braid in order what colors and patterns complemented one another. At the part where I knew I was gonna start to make the top of the basket, I started to braid all the grays together and then I put a pink with it because I thought that went well too. And if you make a mistake and you realize you want your already braided yarn to be in a different order, don't worry because you can cut off your old yarn and then attach it to a different piece easily, which is what I did and I just kind of hand sewed it together in place. Then you continue to braid braid and braid. So if you stay up until 3 a.m. because you don't have classes to hold you accountable and it's the summer, then this is perfect for you because while you're just watching Netflix, you're binging something, you can just braid, braid, braid. For people that actually have normal and healthy circadian rhythms, it'll probably take you like two to three nights to braid everything. This is probably the only situation where being a night owl has ever benefited me. Next up, sewing time. <laughs> 
So once you've braided all your fabric, what you're going to start to do to create the base of the basket is coil it around itself. This is a method that I've seen in a lot of books and vlogs, so this has worked really well for me and for other people based on what they said in their books and vlogs. So once I had created a coil to see how it would look, then I started to coil it in my sewing machine. But then of course I got really upset because my sewing machine was again being super moody. I checked my sewing machine's manual and it said to use size 14 or 16 needles on very heavyweight fabric like denim, so I went with the biggest size needle I could find, which is 16. But I also don't know if I can honestly trust my sewing manual, consider that they spelled the word heavy incorrectly. Even though I used the recommended needle and thread, it was much easier to just sew it by hand because my sewing machine was acting out as much as I did when I was a young teen. While I was sewing, there were some parts of the yarn that I created that were kind of like porcupine-like, like they had spikes going everywhere. I put a thin string around the fabric yarn and that contained the mess, which is basically a metaphor for how I use baskets in my life. For some reason, the base kind of reminded me of a pizza at this point, and that's honestly my one loss as a vegan that I still mourn over. So once I had sewn the base to my liking, I stopped making each rim bigger than the last and then piled each rim at the same size on top of one another. And this is kind of hard in the sewing machine, but like, you'll get through it. But of course, I had to use my poor hand sewing skills. This created the walls of the basket which will now give you an illusion of organization in your life when really you're just hiding everything inside the basket. Okay I did this by hand again but if you have a cooperating young teenager I, I mean sewing machine then definitely use that instead and a zigzag stitch is probably your best bet. Here's my basket. I did the thing, I made the thing, I sewed the thing, I hand sewed the thing. I also added this pink ribbon, which I think is a really cute touch. You can see it doesn't hold much structure, but you can also put in metal and make that different. So I'm really, really happy with this basket and I hope this was as cool as it was to you as it was for me. And I hope you do something like this at home. So thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. Bye. Playing hard to get. Why are you acting tough? Yeah. Got me cracking up